It's hard to comprehend the sheer scale of this flooding disaster. Entire towns underwater, hundreds still trapped in their homes, and as the mammoth rescue effort continues, our attention once again turns to the sky. Flying into Lismore, you can see why this event has been described as catastrophic. While the people here are used to flooding, there's no way they could have expected this. Yesterday, the SES conducted 545 rescues, but they received more than 1,500 calls for help. So clearly there are hundreds of people out there who are waiting to be rescued or who haven't been accounted for yet. Some of the locals are quoted as saying that they thought they could ride it out, that they'd lived through floods before. But clearly, in this instance, the Wilsons River has risen 14.4 metres. Now, that's, that's a record. There's been nothing like that since they've been keeping records. And uh, those people quickly found that they couldn't stay in their houses, that they were scrambling onto roofs and using their mobile phones to call for help. And uh, obviously, the SES was overwhelmed and other locals who had boats or whatever could float were trying to get people to safety. There have been several very dramatic rescues from roofs. Uh, we've heard of uh, pregnant women being rescued, children and whole families being rescued. What's made things worse is that the weather conditions have been constantly changing. Right now it's pretty clear and we're able to get a, a picture of just how vast the flooding has stretched. And obviously it's pretty devastating. We're flying over the centre of the city now and this was the first to be flooded. What you probably can't see is a levee that was built down there to protect the place, but it obviously gave way fairly quickly. And while we're in the air now over Lismore, 30 k south of here, the army is conducting a rescue, rappelling down from a chopper to try and rescue people who were stuck on a tin roof. Uh, quite a dangerous exercise and obviously very dramatic pictures as a result of that. This side of the river is South Lismore and this has always been one of the worst hit whenever there's been flooding and clearly it has been again. I don't think there's a house down there that hasn't been inundated. Clearly today as some of the water has dropped slightly there are still people out moving about, a lot of people in canoes and other watercraft probably attempting to rescue people. There was a whole flotilla of them yesterday who gave up their time to try and save people and there were some heart-rending stories of people on social media talking about how they couldn't get help and what positions they were in. You can see over here that a lot of people have parked their cars on a bridge in the hope that they uh, would be safe. It appears that they have endured so far and if the water keeps, to, uh, keeps dropping then they, they will be lucky. Below us now is the airport which is totally flooded. We can see some small aircraft which have been totally thrown around like matchstick toys. Most of the roads around town are blocked so many of these people will be isolated. And looking down there you can see the destruction that's been caused to some of the businesses. Material just thrown around and in the houses the debris is everywhere. Yesterday there were some uh, really heartwarming pictures of total strangers rescuing rescuing locals. Clearly the authorities were overwhelmed by the number of people wanting help and that's what sparked a lot of the locals to go out and help themselves. People in boats, in tinnies, took to the, uh, the flooded streets to try and rescue people and it was quite heartwarming seeing them help elderly and, and the kind of people who couldn't get out of their homes themselves. Obviously there were several army choppers in the area and a life flight chopper who carried out some very dramatic rescues as people who clambered on their reef called for help. Uh, we saw that there were children who were tied down by their parents with ropes to the roofs until they could be rescued. And what's overwhelming about what we're seeing in front of us here is just the sheer volume of water. It's like a, an, an inland sea. Uh, the river has broken, it, broken its banks and, and just flooded whole valleys. Uh, there are houses, underwater roads, obviously, uh, farmland. Uh, as far as we can see, it looks like Sydney Harbour. It is just a massive expanse of water. Where the water has dropped, the cleanup has begun. Across parts of Brisbane, residents got a glimpse of what's in store for so many. An emotional task, but the mud army dug in. 
Wow. Oh, look at that. That's a big mess. It's not fun, is it? We just had people rocking up randomly saying, can we help? This is just the greatest street. Everybody helps each other. A chaos caused by Mother Nature. Now the hard work begins and it's hot, sweaty and dirty work. And how are you feeling? How uh, tired. It's been a long couple of days. And there's going to be a lot of work to try and clean out. Today, destroyed furniture and once precious belongings lined the streets across Brisbane as flood water receded. So we only got a few things up, but the rest just went underwater. Over there is the lounge suite and um, there's our fridge, our freezer. At Michelle and Allen's Mitchelton home, the water left as quickly as it came, leaving behind a horrid mess. You've already ripped up all the carpet from here? Actually, the firemen came in they and they just... helped us move the freezer and the fridge and the washing machine out of the laundry. This is Michelle standing in their lower level at the peak of the water. It came up over the table. Wow. So all of this stuff got was flooded? Yep, there's your bike. You can see the yeah. bike. Up the road, David Parker is also counting the cost. Look, on Saturday, I moved a few things up, grabbed things and put them on couches inside, thinking that we might get, you know, 100, 200 mil through. But, um, yeah, I never thought we'd get this much. Now he's throwing out countless possessions, all inundated, when a metre of water came through. It's OK, it's not ideal, but the family's safe, so that's the main thing. We've just got to clean up now. And... In floodstruck Hurston, near the Royal Brisbane Hospital, the sounds of generators and high-pressure hoses have replaced gushing water. Christy Brunsden has had the help of her kids to clean up what they can. How much have you lost? Uh, a lot. My son had um, a room down the bottom with, like, a kitchenette full of stuff, all of his gears down there. And it's the things which can't be replaced that hurt the most. Kind of feel bad because everything's lost and like all our albums, like photo albums. Oh, yeah. All yeah. the kids keepsake boxes are all stored downstairs. The downstairs storage room turned upside down. Because the water was so high, it was just like a um, fish tank and everything's floated around. Andrew too is working through the slick mess left behind from the raging water. How is it working through all this mud? Uh, yeah, well it's picking up all the jib rock. So I've got to pick that up and then oh, I can squinch it away. For many of the homes in this Hurston Street, they didn't flood in 2011. Now most of them have had water right the way through. They could do with a helping hand for the cleanup, but with floodwaters at one end of the street and police blocking the other end, it's still too dangerous for people to come through. It is not safe in every part of Brisbane to start the clean-up. Uh, we'll be gearing up as soon as it is safe to do so. The Brisbane Lord Mayor, Adrian Schwinner, has promised help is on the way, urging people to register for another Mud Army. This Sunday is actually Clean Up Australia Day, so it's the perfect weekend to gear up Mud Army 2.0. North of Brisbane, in Gympie, the retreating waters have left a sepia-coloured town, a record flood for the town, followed by overwhelming generosity. And there was some bloke randomly just turned up with a gurney yesterday and he was going from business to business cleaning all the car parks. And when we don't even know who he is, so, you know, whoever you are, big shout thank you. But for some, the flood cleanup is still a way off. Like, we're homeless. Absolutely homeless. Just don't know what to do. Kiri Furlong's Logan home is still surrounded by water. The thought of the cleanup, too big a beast to face right now. It's pretty devastating. I'm going to lose everything we can't even get in because we have chipboard floors. So if we set foot on it, everything's, everything's going to collapse. Logan was Mud Army Heartland after the 2011 floods. Look at that street, this is like mud central ground here. And locals like Louis Numovsky says it'll be no different this time. The, the city's hurting and uh, they're going to need a lot of help. We'll gather as many people as we can once this water starts receding to uh, offer the immediate assistance. We're all a family, but we're all here for each other as much as we can be. 
As the damaging weather system tracks south, residents in the Hunter Valley, Sydney and the south coast are being told to start preparing now. Hannah Sinclair has the latest on the state's emergency response. Well, I'm joined by New South Wales SES Commissioner Carleen York. Carleen, thanks for your time. It's been a devastating few days. Uh, what's the update on the number of people who have called for help? Well, we've had over 6,000 calls for assistance during this operation and are still continuing and expected to continue in through to the weekend. The weather has cleared up there in Tweed and Lismore, so it's really allowed us to get back out and do those rescue calls for people who are in life-threatening situations and get them to a place of safety. How many people are still stranded? There's still a number of people are stranded, but we're cle clearing up the jobs and getting them to safety very quickly today. We've got a lot of helicopters up, a lot of boats um, out there rescuing people. Over the next few days, what will be the focus for the SES? Is it a possibility that you could be helping the clean up in the north while rescuing people in the south? Definitely a possibility. Uh, it is going to happen that way. We're, our operational tempo will be very busy across the whole of the eastern state. What is the message to everybody in New South Wales right now? The message is be very aware of where you are and what your danger is. Look at the SES website, the Bureau of Meteorology, listen to our warnings and take action as a result of those. So if you're in an evacuation warning area, that means get ready to evacuate. Know where uh, your documents are, uh, look after your pets, make sure your family's safe and have a bag ready of those essential items that you may need. This is quite a devastating flood. It's bigger than we've had in history up in the Lismore area. We anticipate it'll be quite large as it goes south. So we may not be able to get back to you if you have not evacuated when we've done the order. So uh, leave when you need to and then don't drive through floodwaters. It's obviously a very dynamic situation and some very sound advice there. Thanks for your time, Carleen. As ground and air crews continue to navigate rescue efforts in the north, the Bureau of Meteorology is warning the wild weather is moving south. I've got Dean Narimore from the Weather Bureau with me. Dean, tell us, where is the weather system right now and where could it move to? Yeah, the low pressure system is currently off the central coast of New South Wales. It's been a wet afternoon and it's still raining tonight across large parts of the central coast. And that's going to continue into tomorrow as well as the low drags closer. Severe weather warnings are current for heavy rain and damaging winds. And we could see falls of 50 to 150 millimetres with this system, with isolated totals in excess of 200 millimetres. And we're also going to see those winds really pick up along the coast as well. So it's going to be a, a wet and woolly night tonight and likely to continue for large parts of the New South Wales coast from Newcastle all the way down to the south coast into Wednesday and Thursday. So not only will this low bring heavy rainfall, it's also likely to bring damaging winds as well as abnormally high tides and hazardous surf. So for those right on the coast, we're likely to see winds enough to bring down trees and power lines, which can cause power outages, but also these strong winds on the beach coastal areas are likely to lead to coastal erosion as well. So hazardous surfing conditions and also hazardous coastal conditions as well, causing coastal erosion. So really a wild few days, particularly for coastal parts of central and southern New South Wales and inland towards the hills. I don't think I'm the only person that would say this. It feels like it has been raining all summer on the east coast of Australia. Dean, put us out of our misery. When will it end? Yeah, look, it's a great question. Uh, it has been a very wet summer for many of us and the La Nina peak has starting to fall away, but there's still a lag time between when La Nina weakens and when the atmosphere catches up. So we're probably still looking at a wet and humid kind of March, but as we move into April and May, hopefully we'll start to see this kind of record-breaking rainfall and widespread rain start to ease as we move into April and May. Thanks for that, Dean. From the air to the ground, where emergency crews know every second counts. In places like McLean, locals are stranded, so the boat crews are checking in on families. The camera out on the Clarence River, you know, we've seen, it, we've seen it flooded, we've seen her swollen many times before. How does this compare, do you think? Oh, look, um, compared to last year, uh, 2021, uh, March last year, same time, um, the, um, the river was nowhere near this high. We're only just over an hour south of Lismore, which you guys Correct. have been watching for the last couple of days. Correct. How were you feeling watching that? Uh, you just got a feel for those guys. I mean, we're, we're lucky compared to them. What they've copped up there is just extraordinary. Um, and I guess they're used to floods as well, but 
that's extraordinary what they've, they've had to deal with and, and we were hoping we don't have the same. Um, our water though is, uh, is coming from a long way up. Um, this, this river is a mighty river, it's extremely long and uh, it can take a few days for it to really take effect down here sometimes. Um, but if we get too much more water you know, high in the, uh, in the upper reaches, well then it can change everything so quickly. The current is so strong, you can, you can feel it, can't you? Pushing, pushing against us as we're travelling up the river. There's just so much water. What about the people here? I mean, how long will they be isolated for, do you think? They could be isolated over here for um, maybe another three or four days, I think. Um, but that's what we do, you know, we, we look after each other and um, we get out there and do food drops and, and medical drops. And there's been a lot of those going on today. Um, medical evacuations, because these people in these islands uh, over here, that's a big island, um, and they literally can't get off. How are you coping in there? Sitting here right now, the sun is shining, but it, the damage to this region is incredible. Yeah, it is, and it, it's so deceptive, you know. Um, Probably uh, if the, the weather finds up, it can be just glorious out here, but as you say, um, the damage that's done. and um, It's also the stress that it puts on people because they don't know, you know, and we don't know, you know, is it going to come up another 100 mil or is it going to come up another half a metre? We just don't know. You doing okay, guys? Yeah. Yeah, well, good. You think have it all sorted? Yeah, we've been doing it a while now. Uh, we've had 19 floods here, so... Just um, checking in with the SES to see how, how everybody is going. So. No, we're fine. Did you say 19 floods? Yeah, we live yeah. next door, yeah. Yeah, wow. We just bought some hay over to them. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Is that, that's what's happening here, isn't it? Everyone's banding together? And... Yeah, yeah. That's what we do. What, uh, what do the next few days look like for you? Oh, once it drops, it, you know, it's, it's the mud. We'll get, probably get about that much mud. Just clean up? Yeah, it's clean up. You can see how close it uh, it came. Yeah, and that was higher this morning, so it's actually gone down a little bit, um, which is good to see. And obviously all the locals are out to, to watch. Um, and that's probably, if that breaches that wall, it's probably nearly two metres down onto the road that's below there. Are you and your team tired? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we get tired. Um, we had uh, yesterday, I, I think I was up at uh, one o'clock in the morning, um, putting a, a person's mind at rest that you know we would come and get them and, and things like that and um, then at three o'clock in the morning we were talking to the same person again and um, so then you work all day and you you go home and you think oh the phone's going to go off again and you know you just keep going and deal with what you have to deal with and and that's just not me that's everyone all the, the effort that people put in is amazing like, that's, that's a community effort that's just astounding you know We've heard repeatedly over the past few days that people have been taken by complete surprise. Tonight, parts of New South Wales have been given some warning. I spoke with Adam Jones, a flood rescue operator from the SES, a short time ago. Adam, thank you for your time. This rain system that's been so devastating up north is now heading south. Do you know yet with any clarity where it's going to hit? The uh, system is coming in and the uh, area that we're looking like it's going to hit is from the central New South Wales all the way down to Bega. Uh, and so we're asking all of the community to prepare their properties uh, and prepare their plans as well. Uh, we've got incredibly wet soil the whole way. It's saturated. All of our river systems and dams are full. Uh, so even if you're not in the heart of where this storm hits, uh, we could be seeing flash flooding just from a small amount of rain up and down the coast. Can you be any more specific than that? Because we are hearing uh, forecasts like, you know, 200 millimetres in six hours overnight around Sydney, for example. I mean, is that a maybe or are you a bit more definite about that now? It's not just a maybe. Uh, there is a, a system forming um, outside the... Uh, on the coast and it will come in and hit. Uh, we're having words like rain bomb, which is similar to what we've, we've seen hit Sydney before. Um, we've had two large uh, sort of operational floods in, in Sydney in the last two years in the Hawkesbury Valley. Uh, the 
people out there are incredibly resilient um, and they have prepared for these types of things before. But as we've seen up north, um, these events take people by surprise. So we're asking everyone along the whole coast to get prepared now um, for this what is almost going to be a unprecedented rain event. So if, for example, uh, you're around the Hawkesbury, should you be moving your stock to higher ground? I mean, and if it misses you, well, OK, you've just moved them for nothing. But, I, I mean, you're obviously thinking that it, there's more of a chance that it's going to flood than not flood. Is that right? I don't think we're, it's more of a chance that it's going to flood than not flood. It's more that there, there's a very high chance. There's already a warning out for those areas you've just discussed. Um, there is the warning coming through for the whole of the south coast and we are asking our community to get ready now. You hit the nail on the head before. You said that worst case scenario is you move your stock up to higher ground and we're not just talking about stock, we're asking people to prepare their homes as well, um, including prepare their travel. You know, if We've just spent a lot of time working at home and if it's something that is available to you, it can't be for everybody, we are asking people to limit their travel and that includes that. We need to make sure that if the event does hit down here, it's as minimised as possible and that's by you, the community, making as smart decisions now, uh, preparing your home or your property um, or your business and that includes moving stock up um, into higher ground. That includes preparing your property, making sure your gutters are clear, uh, clearing any debris from around your home, tying down anything that could be, you know, there's high, high winds predicted with any sort of event like we're talking about. Um, so tying down any loose items in those, in those areas. And it also includes limiting travel. And there's, there's three things we say about limiting travel in the SES, and that is, is it essential? Now, we all think all our trips are essential, but is this actually essential during, if you're in one of those situations when the rain's really coming down. Have you checked livetraffic.com to find out if the route that you're taking on your essential trip is able to be made? And if on that trip you do come across flood water, we're asking you to turn around. Now, we fully understand the frustrations with running late for an appointment or running late to get somewhere and coming up to a flooded road and having to turn around. We've seen the devastation that's happened up north and it's time to really make safe, smart decisions to protect yourself, your family and anyone else that can, has to come and rescue you. You're still dealing with a catastrophe up north. Do you have the, the people power to deal with what's about to hit further south? The SES doesn't work alone. Um, we do have a significant number of people that have been sent up to assist with those communities. Um, but all the way down the coast, we've got our members prepared, preparing themselves and get it preparing their, their units and their equipment and their community. We've got um, sandbags being opened up, all um, sandbag depots being opened up all up and down from different units. So members of the community can go and pick, pick up sandbags. Um, there's usually SES people there, so you can have a, have a quick chat about how you can prepare your home better. All right. Well, we've got a, a busy another few days ahead, it would appear. Thank you for your time. It's an important warning to give people. Thank you very much, Tracy. Stay safe, everybody, over the next couple of days.